All right, shalom, shalom. Uh, this is your brother Nai Yaakov. Um, just coming at you with another video regarding. Uh, well, this is this will just be really food for thought. <clears throat> and I'm just thinking, what is all of this for? I mean, what really is the objective? What really is the end goal? You know, where do we stand? Where do we intend or plan to go? And I'm seeing that Adam, when he got caught up, in sin, enticed by the woman, the Eve, his counterpart. Man got sick. Very, very sick. And now he requires a healing for that sickness. That sickness, that very thing, that, that forgetfulness. And Adam failed to be a tried and true working property in the kingdom of heaven. And so, man must fight to gain back the place he once lost and he he must overcome in order to do that to achieve that and he must know every single facet of his being in every single facet of his charge, his dominion that the Father gave him, he must understand all of this before he can ever move forward correctly in order to be a living, breathing, moving, working property in the kingdom of heaven. And so that becomes man's objective. Right now, family, we must fight to make ourselves moving properties, motion, working properties in the kingdom of heaven. In all your knowledge that you study and that you research, it will avail you nothing if you do not know the Father the most high because you'll take knowledge and use it according to your own selfish means you see Adam must be knowledgeable of all the words of, 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 of wisdom he must be knowledgeable of himself he must be aware of his state and he must work to overcome his state. The inner self, the inner state that Adam sunk to. And he sunk to an inner state that is imprisoned by the outer state or his flesh. And Adam must work to overcome that. How will he work to overcome it if he hasn't begun to accumulate the knowledge necessary for him to put every single facet of his being in the right place? So as to say, this is this, this is that, that is this. And so the Most High brings to Adam. All the animals, 
And Adam goes to naming all the species, the manner of animal, the manner of animals, the characteristics of fleshly nature. Adam begins to name and call out all of these fleshly characteristics according to their essences. Y'all know all animals have a peculiar characteristic. And according to that peculiar characteristic, Adam named these animals. Now these peculiar characteristics are all of a fleshly nature. And so according to that fleshly nature, Adam named these animals and his sinking caused all of those animalistic natures to imprison and captivate him. Those same natures he named, those characteristics in animals he named, he sunk underneath. And so now those things he was supposed to have dominion over, those animalistic natures, he was intended to have dominion over, gain dominion over him. And so now Adam is sunken to a state whereby animal natures or his impulse or his inclinations, these animal natures are all that he thinks about. And so this is the true nature of the fall of Adam. But Adam must rise out of that. Right? We, Adam, must rise out of that. And in order to do that, we must first begin to shine a light in the darkness through the word of God. And so that light shines in the darkness through the word of God, the inner darkness where it grows within you an eye that is able to see and comprehend everything that's happening in you. All men accumulate thought but cannot explain from whence the thought comes the idea the unction the inclination the impulse man is incapable of understanding from whence comes all of these impulses but i for one know that there's an evil one and his many legions that sends impulses into every single man and so a lot of us bow down to every impulse that we receive within our thinking every idea we bow down to every idea that is pleasing when we say oh this is an idea that would make me happy or that would make me do less work or that would make me do more work that would give me more money that what everything that, 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 that man does, he does through the inclination or impulse of the flesh. The nature that he once named in every single, every single animal now has dominion over him. And so Adam must overcome. Adam must be tried and true. Right? He must wrestle. With that dominion, the fleshly nature, and wrestle that nature with the inner impulse that we all have, yet we do not listen to. That inner impulse that says, this is wrong. The Father is watching. He will judge, and you will have to answer for all that you've done. That impulse is enough to guide every single one of us into the right direction but we neglect to listen to it so the impulse grows weak and in some of us the impulse is no longer there but we all have the impulse that warns us against dangerous things or sin or anything that is against or contrary to right to justice to truth to peace all of those things are, con are contrary to all that we see, all that we believe. And so, man has to overcome these false impulses, these lower natures, these 
beastly things that Adam went to naming in every single creature that now has dominion over him. He must now gain dominion over the beasts of the field that he once named within himself. And he must learn to hear, feel, sense the impulse of God that is also within him and that needs to grow. And so that impulse is meant for man to find the right way, to be guided to the truth. To the understanding of God. To the ways of God. But man listens not. And so. Now the objective is. How do you cause this voice to grow? How do you cause the word of God to. Pulsate within you. Greater. Than any other way. That he has ever. Uh, that that any, any other voice that also. Pulsates within you. Because every other voice is either one or two things. Worldly nature or animal nature or fleshly nature and self nature, selfhood, selfishness. And these are two voices that pulsate within you. And both of them are Satan and devils and demons and things of that nature. But in the man of God, the only pulsating voice is the word of God. And the man of God listens to that voice. And he does according to the will of that voice. Which brings me to the ultimate purpose of this video. It isn't enough for man to say he, he repents. It isn't enough for, for man to even be a working property in a sense. But if man hasn't done the inner research... If he hasn't unveiled the inner essences, the inner false impulses that come his way, the devil will always have place. The devil will always have the ability to sway the man of God or the one taking the effort in the word of God. No, in the man of God, all things must be complete. He cannot move forward without first knowing the most high. He has to know the most high. But how do you... Not know the most high, but until you go off of an unction to believe. I have an unction to believe in the most high. Try and see. Taste and see. Of what manner, of what sort, what sort is he? Is he sweet? Is he bitter? Is he astringent? Is he meek? Is he mild? What manner of man is this God that we serve? And so Adam is nothing without the, the, the a, a, a grasp of the God he serves. For he will forever stumble if he cannot grasp him and him alone. And so when Adam begins to grasp the Lord, he, he, he finds something undescri indes un undescribable. Incomprehensible, something incorporeal, something unfathomable. He finds something beyond anything he could ever think or do. And so he begins to realize just how incapable he is and how capable the one he's seeking out actually is. And so he bows the knee and he says, for you are far wiser than I. I yield my will unto thee, my way unto thee, my thinking unto thee, everything about me that I yield. Because you are better than I, far better than I, far greater than I could ever be. And so, Adam, learning the Most High, learns himself in that he is the image of this one he bows down to. And so to forever find himself, he must forever seek out his father. And that's what Adam becomes. A student of the Most High. Yielding to his every whim, his every way, his every understanding. And Adam knows 
that he is incapable of understanding it himself. So he yields. Even beyond his own understanding. And in yielding he gains higher and higher understanding. For a new thing is always strange. And when it comes down to understanding and seeking out the Father, it will always be strange because it will always be a new thing every time. And so Adam gets used to this strange and this new feeling of seeking out the wellspring of the Most High. Understanding, learning, and knowledge. And he finds content and joy and happiness knowing that he can excel as fast as he wants to. As high as he wants to, as low as he wants to, as slow as he wants to. He's at liberty to go at whatever speed that he wants to in seeking out the Father. But he does know this one thing, that in seeking out him, everything he finds becomes him, becomes a part of him. And he operates and functions according to his understanding in the heights of the Father, the God that he serves. And so we all find God. We all may look at him, but we all will see a different face. Having mastered him in the strength of the fear of God, or some in the strength of wisdom, or some in the strength of knowledge, and some in the strength of truth. And so we will all understand that the Father will yield to every man according to his own essence and the desires of his heart in God. But then that still isn't enough. Because not only does Adam search out an unsearchable God. And in that searching the father gives him snippets and glances here and there. For Adam to say this is the, this is the God I serve. And it's a forever seeking. And so Adam says, this is the God I serve. And so that's me, is what Adam says, knowing that he is the image of the Father. And the Father causes him to be a, a particular and peculiar, unique image in him, as all men are. Peculiar and unique and called by the name of their uniqueness. And so... The Father becomes the image of multiple unique things that all form one whole unique image in God. And this is the name of God. This is the likeness of God, the image of God that man should have been from day one. For the image of God is not just a, a, a word, it's a living, moving entity, it's a living, moving thing. And it is the Son of God. And when people realize that, they will all fight to become that image, that son, that thing that they once were. Because Christ calls us co-heirs. Y'all know that. And so in co-heirship, that means we all share in the same name of God. That is unfathomable. No need to be jealous. No need to be envious of the next man. There's only need to expand and grow the name of God for the glory of God in every man. And so when you look at your brother excelling, you don't, you don't be like Cain and, and, and envy and jealous and become jealous of your brother and want to murder and slay and kill your brother. No. You become a brother that says to yourself, wow, how amazing is the name of God. And so we all glory and ravel in that one thing alone. And so, knowing the name of God isn't enough. Incorporating the name of God isn't enough. But yea, drawing out the love for that name and that incorporation begins to heat you up on the inside. And so, Knowing the kingdom of God, his name, his image, his kingdom begins to well up in the son of God, a seeking and a fervent work in his best effort and ability in the father. And so not only does he become a, a working property, but an intelligible working property. 
an intelligent working property, an intelligible working property, able to teach and able to learn in the Father. And so he becomes active and moving in God. And in that, man is complete. For that is the number seven. Don't you see how that on the seventh day he rested? And don't you understand rest, true rest, is everything working properly in God. And so on the seventh day, everything worked properly when he was done making all things. And so this is man's nature. To learn the kingdom of heaven. To understand wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. To incorporate all these things within him. Hand and feet. And within all his flesh and all his members. Within all his soul. And so the name of God becomes his own. His very own unique name. In God. And then man rises up in the zeal and love of God. And begins to work. And Adam is complete. And so the seventh day is you fully working, fully complete and operable, well learned, intelligent, intelligent, intelligent and intelligible in the God, in the Father that we serve. And that's Adam. And so shall we all fight to become that very thing. Uh, an, an intelligible, intelligent, moving, working property in the Father. That's the objective. And when we do that, we will assuage the anger of God in the earth. We will subdue the pressure that is upon our heads, alleviating it and putting it all in the hands of the Father. Until then, we're going to continue to suffer. And this thing is going to get greater and greater. The more we go, the further we go. Until we begin to develop working, intelligent, intelligent, intelligible, moving, working properties in the Father. And that's what I have for today. Whoever that message may help, let it help. Shalom.